Yo, yo, yo. Hey, guys, welcome back to another awesome edition of the Best Practices Show podcast. My name is Kirk Barron, where I have one cool, very cool responsibility is to find the best thinkers, speakers, teachers, mentors, voices in all of dentistry and share with you great words of wisdom on a great future in dentistry. And today I bring back one of my dear friends, Dr. Mark Hyman, who's been a great mentor, great friend of mine for a long, long time. And many of you know him. And we talk about the navigation of your preferred future as a dentist and discuss some of the big challenges that you might think you have in the future and what some of those solutions might be. So make sure you check it out. I know you will enjoy it and we'll see you guys soon. Hey guys, welcome back to the Best Practices Show podcast. I freaking love this. And if you've been joining us at any level, at any time for the last couple of years, you've been enjoying my guest, who is not only a great uh, mentor to to me, a great friend, a great colleague, he's my therapist at times, uh, Dr. Mark Hyman from UNC Dental School. And we're going to be talking about how you can navigate your preferred future in dentistry? Because we get these questions all the time. You know, is it still a good idea to be a dentist? Is it it's expensive? What do I do? All this stuff. Mark, thanks for being on, brother. Kirk, what a joy to see you once again. This is just, I feel like I'm back home with my Yoda master. What you and Act Dental did for the dental profession when dentistry was face planted down in the gutter during COVID, I will never forget it. And I'm just so proud to be your colleague and your friend and any way I can help, I'm honored. Yeah. And it's weird how our journeys have just all come together. I love your product placement in the back. You know, what, what are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. So if you guys are watching the video, you can see he's got the UNC school of dentistry. He's wearing his Tar Heel shirt, which I, we, I'm now at Tar Heel because of a Tar, tar Heel parent. And funny, this journey began because I don't tell the story a lot, but my first lecture was at the UNC School of Dentistry, and I was scared to death. I spoke to those kids, and I think half of them fell asleep, and then the other half that were awake left in the middle of the lecture, but uh, everybody's got to start somewhere, right? And uh, it, you know, it did get better after that, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's been a wonderful place, and uh, it continues to be a wonderful place. So, uh, Mark, I want people to know your story a little bit. Um, I mean, if you've been living under a rock, you don't know Mark Hyman's story, but who the heck is Dr. Mark Hyman? Kirk, I'm a guy that is so fortunate to be in dentistry. I love this profession beyond words. I'm from Greensboro, North Carolina. I'm a quadruple Tar Heel, UNC undergraduate dental school, two-year oral medicine hospital dental residency. I loved my 32 years of private practice. Now I'm an adjunct full professor and special assistant to the office of the dean at the UNC Adams School of Dentistry, which is one of the top dental schools in the world. And we're just on fire. We have our brand new Dean, Dean Janet Guffmiller. It's gonna be starting in a few weeks and we're excited for that. And just a gorgeous facility. Chapel Hill is a great place to, to teach. And my students are just outrageous. So I love this profession. I'm grateful beyond words. And I just appreciate you. I remember meeting you at the Florida Dental Association meeting, which actually is happening this weekend in Orlando, and thought, who is this madman? And I found out uh, you're just one of the dear souls. You'd be on Mount Rushmore for dentistry if I had anything to do with it. So proud to be your friend, bud. Well, that's very, very kind of you. Um, And we'll, (laughs) oh gosh, you know, uh, we'll (laughs) underwhelm people shortly with what I have to add to this conversation, but- uh, Um, and you know, uh, it's just, it's always fun being with you and in, uh, you know, I was sharing this before we went live, um, when I was panicking a couple of years ago, when we went through a pandemic, you're one of the first people I called and I'm like, I don't know what to do here, brother. And you were like, I don't know, what do you want to do? And, um, uh, you know, knowing you in all these years being, you know, such a great friend and a great mentor, you always give me great 
you know, words of wisdom. And we were together recently and you have this thing called the breakfast club. And, uh, <laughs> you text me and you said, Hey, look, be outside. And I get in your car, you got all these gifts and goodies and food for these kids. I'm like, what are we doing? And you're like, hurry up, let's go. And then, uh, can you just talk about the breakfast club? What is it? You know, I think sure. it's pretty cool what you've created. You know, I've, I've had the privilege of teaching the intro to private practice class at the dental school for the past 32 years, which is a fall semester for the first year dental students. Right now we teach business all eight semesters of dental school for our students. But the students said, we want more. When I left private practice and started at the dental school, I started with the fourth year students where I would meet them at 7 a.m. on a Monday morning and I'd bring them snacks and treats. And we would just go off over case after case, Kirk, real world private practice Monday morning. Here's Mrs. Smith. What do you say? What do you see? How do you talk about it? What's your verbal skills? How do you overcome objections? What do you do when things go wrong? So my students have just adored it. And I just started my sixth version of Breakfast Club with a group of our rising D2 students. And this class is just absolutely full of superstars. We have the Women's Lacrosse National Player of the Year. We have the D2 Soccer National Champion. We have a world-class cellist. We have two naval fighter pilots. We have a uh, cancer researcher. It's just nuts. These uh, A D1 swimmer, a D1 basketball player, artists athletes, musicians, just unbelievable kids. But they are so smart book-wise, but they don't have real-world common sense Monday morning stuff. So I make them verbalize, role play, say, talk me through this. What are your questions? What are you going to say? And I try to beat the limiting beliefs out of them, like the insurance has anything to do with you practicing optimal care, comprehensive dentistry. Right. Because as we know, there is no real dental insurance. It's a coupon per year that you get to cash and it's better than nothing, but it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with the patient's goals for their health, teeth and smile. So yeah. I try to make sure the students own that. And the kids that have gone through breakfast club have just adored it. And uh, my first year doing that, that's July, two of them called me after they left Carolina and they said, Dr. Mark, I just closed two twenty thousand dollars cases using your verbal skills. I was like, yeah, it works which it means you outlisten the competition. You ask instead of tell. You use your intro camera like your digi-doc on every patient for every procedure before, during, and after. And you sit back, you ask open-ended questions, and you smile. And it works. And yeah. it's just a joyful way to practice. So uh, kind of turbulent times going on, Brother Kirk, isn't it? Yeah. So I want to ask you about that. So as we were discussing what we're going to discuss today, navigating your preferred future. Tell yeah. us what that means. Tell us why that's an important topic. You know, I, I love that topic because a preferred future, I am a firm believer with you, yourself, with your team, with your practice, with your patients, there's no hostages. No one has to be in your practice. No one has to work there. You don't have to work there. So what is your vision for your preferred future? Who do you want to treat? What procedures do you want to do? How do you want to do them? When do you want to do them? That is the beauty of dentistry, Kirk. We get to sculpt exactly what we want. And I hate it when our colleagues feel like they're victims and they say to me, Dr. Mark, you just don't get it. I'm not in Beverly Hills. I'm not in Palm Beach. I'm not in Palm Springs. I, don't, I can't practice like you did. I'm like, really? In freaking Greensboro, North Carolina, three biggest employers were furniture, textiles, tobacco. You kidding me, man? Yeah. And every year my practice grew uh, till the day that I left. And I so appreciated that privilege. And it's because I was not that smart and I wasn't that talented, but I figured out early on, you have got to improve yourself and better yourself and write down your goals and constantly be reevaluating them and rewriting them and raising the bar. So I made the determination. I set a goal to do a hundred hours of continuing education every year. I got my fellowship with the Academy of General Dentistry. I got my mastership with the Academy of General Dentistry. I went through the curriculum at the Pankey Institute in Key Biscayne, Florida, and got to teach at Pankey. I went through the Spear curriculum out in Scottsdale and got to teach a class out there as well. I got to have lunch and listen to Pete Dawson. I got to meet John Coyce and listen to him speak. So I realized early on, I've got no clue. I'm going to keep improving, keep trying to develop a very broad, wide foundation and build upon it. Yeah. Kirk, I also decided I'm not going to do procedures that I don't enjoy. I enjoy. I didn't like endo. I didn't like putting cork in a bottle. There are people who are good at it and enjoy it. God bless them. 
that was not me. I love doing the comprehensive restorative dentistry. I love doing my CAD CAM dentistry. I think I was the second CERAC owner in the state of North Carolina back in 1997, bought four versions of the CAD CAM machine. So appreciated that. I had eight operatories. Kirk, how many intro cameras did I have? Nine. I like the way you think. We had eight oh. cameras. We had a camera in every operatory. We took a before, during, and after photo on every patient. I was an isolite addict. I had eight oh. operatories, Kirk. How many isolites did I have? An oper one for each operatory. I already know. We use it on, on every Everybody, patient, every all procedure. day long. Yeah. Bill Carnegie organization says three magic words, bud. Success leaves clues. Yes. What do the highly successful men and women in dentistry do? They get great consultants. They go to tons of continuing education. They buy the best equipment and they use it on everybody with no fear of failure. Yeah. We buffered all of our local anesthesia with the onset from on pharma. We use the super duper topical, the mixture of lidocaine, prilocaine, tetracaine. So the patients were completely numb. I had the isolite in there. I had the before, during, and after photos. Used an electric handpiece like a cavo, which those babies just purr. And then I had the CAD CAM dentistry with the CERAC. It was a formula for a tremendously successful practice. I was very grateful for that. Yeah. Let me ask you, though, let's go through the whole journey of this when you're talking about your preferred future and what you're really implying is people have a choice and, and let's start with the first choice which is to become a dentist and so you're involved heavily with the admissions at the unc school of dentistry is it still a good profit now i know what the answer to this is the answer like, is well i think it's an amazing profession but you get still a good profession no yes why not no, a good you, profession. It's a great profession. Okay, all right. It's all the right, best right, profession. Right, Are you freaking kidding me, man? You're messing with me now. Huh? You all get right, to cool. work on who you want, when you want, doing the procedures that you want to do at the pace you choose. Yeah, but For it costs so part, much now, Mark, to be a dentist. What are you talking a, about? You are absolutely correct. It is an investment like right. anything that's worth paying for. And what I would say is if you, for example, with your DigiDoc, it's going to cost you $20 a day for a year. You take a picture on every patient for every procedure before, during, and after. You are guaranteed at minimum to add $500 a day. Most dentists work 200 days a year. It's a $100,000 increase in your practice just flicking your wrist. Yeah. The fact is you're probably not going to make an extra hundred grand. You're going to make an extra 200 grand a year. Over five years, it's a million-dollar change in your practice just applying the technology and these principles that people buy what they value. They buy what they want. They buy what they see. They buy what they can understand. You tell yeah. someone you have a crack through the distal facial of number two. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. You put a color photo up there and say, sir, do you see this line? What does a patient say? Is that cancer? No. What do you think it is? Is that a crack? How can I help you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do I need to fix it? It's your body. It's your health. You can do anything you want. Right. You like to wait for a slow, painful root canal. Oh God, I don't want one of them. Then I go into the choice of yeses. Kirk, would you like this fixed in gold or white? Yes. Would you like it fixed mornings or afternoons? Which do you prefer? Mornings. Mornings. In fact, you're not giving me the opportunity schedule, to say no. <laughs> which means the dental assistants, you're not getting lunch. We're sent out for turkey sandwiches. I'm going to prep Kirk right then, right yeah. now. Okay. I was with... my team added $2,000 a day in just because same day dentistry, just right. because we had the audacity to ask. There you go. You ask one question to this great man, you get a lot of answers that are all spot on. And I completely agree. And that also speaks to a well-trained team. Now, let me ask you this too, because I do want to know, like you get to interview these kids. Yep. What are some of the questions they ask? You know, like uh, you oh, and boy. I feel strongly about this, but you're, you have a moment with them and, and you, you ask them questions and then you say, do you have any questions for me? What are they asking? You know, the questions that the students ask are as varied as you can imagine. This past year at UNC, we had almost 2,000 initial applicants for 82 spots. It was nuts. We interviewed about 300. We accepted 82. The question that I would often hear is, am I going to get to try every specialty? Well, at UNC, we have every specialty program. So yes, you will. You know, am I going to get to try new technology? We have same-day crown clinic. We have CAD CAM clinic at the UNC Dental School. Every operatory has an isolite courtesy of Zyrus. We appreciate it. They donated over $400,000 of isolites to UNC. We have an intro camera in every operatory. So it took me four deans to get this stuff into the UNC clinics, but we have it. 
So I can say to the students, you're going to get to beta test this equipment. You're going to get to test drive the finest equipment and see what your practice could be like, where yeah. you get to use visual, ed visual education instead of just verbal. You get to use the finest technology. You get to look towards a preferred future that you want, which is taking great care of the patients with the best technology that we have. Yeah. A lot of them say, well, ma'am, dental school at in-state UNC, it's one of the most affordable dental schools. The kids are still going to get out about 250000 in debt. Man, that's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah. To which my students have been trained to say, compared to what? Compared to what? Now, let me compared go back. Compared to, to what? To what? Because go if I can show them how to add a hundred grand a year using your camera on every patient, they can pay off dental school in a couple of years. Yeah. Now, again, I want to go back to the preferred future. Okay. So I'm, I, I make the decision. I make it through. I get to be one of the 82, which is awesome at UNC. Now you've been with me. I've been through the, your breakfast club. You get this question when it comes to navigating your preferred future. Dr. Mark, should I specialize? I'm thinking about specializing. What do you say to him? Hey, that is a great question, which as you taught me, Kirk, is the great stall answer of all time. When you don't know what to say, you say, you know, that's a good question. <laughs> no, it's not, but it gives you a chance to think. Right. And I'd say, what do you love? Right. The student says, well, root canals are profitable. The overhead's only 37% in an endodontic practice. I'm like, do you love root canals? No, well then don't do them. You don't have to. Right. What do you love doing? What do you get fired up about doing? For me, here's a shocker on the DISC profile, D-I-S-C. I'm a high I. I'm an extrovert, what? high influencing. The D, the dominant in the office. My I is off the scale. The D is huge. I don't have any steady, any cautious, any S or C. Yeah. So for me, for example, doing ortho, I did Invisalign. I did six month smile. And what I figured out with ortho is ortho is hard and the teeth don't always go where I tell them. Where with a new diamond burr, the teeth go exactly where I tell them to go. Right. So for me, for being a needy puppy, that fit my temperament more. What I would tell my students is consider a residency, try different things. If you go do a program and it isn't the right fit for you, then go do something else. You're a young man, you're a young woman. You got your whole life in front of you. Don't think that you're stuck doing something that you don't enjoy. Yeah. I did a two-year hospital residency. About half of it was spent at VA hospitals. We got to do a tremendous amount of dentistry on these dear men and women that picked up a weapon and protected this country. It was my privilege to care for them. Yeah. So there's just so many opportunities. The other piece at UNC, Kirk, I've shared this with you before. I think the past three years running, about 41 of our 82 students have applied for graduate programs, for specialty programs. About 38 out of 41 got in. Wow. The success rate is staggering. That's so awesome. I would say to them, you don't have to have a final decision. You're freaking 25 years old. You're not supposed to know it all yet. Yeah. Okay. So, so go try something. So go try something. So, okay. I decide to do that. I make it through again. Mark, Dr. Mark, where do I go? Okay. So now like, you know, what do you say to that? I mean, I, I have you, met your kids that you, go through that. It's awesome. Yeah, what do you I'd tell these you, kids? You tell me, where, where do you, who do you want to serve? Yeah. You want to join the military and serve our veterans and active duty soldiers? Semper Fi, God bless. You want to do research, go do research. You want to work in a university. There's a huge opportunity to teach. You want to do a little bit of teaching and a little bit of practicing. You can do that too. The huge opportunity is not necessarily to live in a big city, but to live within spitting distance, but that you could live in a smaller community where the competition isn't as heavy. I chose to live in my hometown of Greensboro, North Carolina, because I wanted a nice airport. I wanted a synagogue. I wanted a symphony. I wanted a Jewish day school for my kids. That is part of the beauty of dentistry is you get to choose again, where you want to live, who you want to serve. Part of that preferred future, again, Kirk, is to make the decision. I am not going to be a pawn of the insurance company. I'm going to be a doctor caring for my patients, not a provider of a commodity. So in a big city where a, there is a ton of PPOs, HMOs, managed care, it may be harder to do that in this economy. And I understand that where right. you have may, more, maybe have more freedom if you go practice in a small, smaller community or just outside a big city. All right. Now I'm having fun with you because you know Bring where I'm going. Home, baby. You, 
okay, Dr. Mark, things were easier back when you did this. You know, yeah. now gas prices are skyrocketing. We know what's going to happen next. There's going to be inflation. Yep. You know, um, I have a lot of debt. Yep. It's different now. Yep. Like, what do you? What are your thoughts when that comes up? I'd say you have no clue how fortunate you are. When I finished dental school, I think the prime interest rate was 20%. So what's it up to now? Five, mm -hmm. five and a half. Yep. I know it wasn't as fun as when it was one, but that's not a real number. Right. Oh, Dr. Mark, you got to practice in the golden age of dentistry. We were in dental school. I started dental school in 1980. Kirk, I started as a dental assistant when I was 19. I've been involved in dentistry for almost 45 years. It's nuts. Mm-hmm. We didn't have intro cameras. We didn't have isolite. We didn't have the adhesive dentistry. We didn't have the buffering of the anesthesia. We didn't have Invisalign. We didn't have six month smile. We didn't have the super topical. We didn't have the unbelievable implant dentistry. We didn't have the sleep medicine. We didn't have the knowledge of caring with bite splints and TMJ work and all of these things. So now if we, I practice in the golden age of dentistry for young docs, you're in the platinum diamond crusted age. Is the economy tough right now? Yeah, well, we just survived a once in a century global pandemic that crushed the economy and there's a war going on. Yep. We're going to be fine. I'm not here to give investing advice, but the past two weeks I bought because I follow Warren Buffett and I believe him a thousand percent where he says he loves to buy good companies at a discount. Yeah. You so, know, it's so funny. You, those words are very comforting me. You said to them to me in the middle of a pandemic, we're going to be fine. I'm like, easy for you to say, buddy, you've, you're retired, you know, you're, you're good. Um, and you know what? You were right. We just had to be patient enough for that to happen and well, get I, our I, Kirk, I practiced long enough to practice during 20, I, I was in dental school with the prime rate up at 20%. I remember two space shuttles blowing up. I remember practicing during 9-11, right. during the dot-com bubble bursting in 2000, during the housing crisis in 08, 09. And every time within less than two years, the market bounced back and we are going to be fine because this is freaking America. I love it. I love and it. This now is the greatest place there is. And we got problems and we're going to work on solving them. But being Amen. a dentist in America is unbelievable. There's a 300 some million patients potentially, and only half of them go to the dentist every year. 100%, 100%. Now let's speak to the 32 year old listener who's been listening for a while. Dr. Mark, I totally believe what you're saying. I got out, I loved dentistry, and now I don't have the preferred future I was hoping for, what do I do now? I'm five years in, like, what do I do? Six, you know, a couple years in, what do I do? What do you suggest? Appreciate that. I would say, if you think back to your science training about a sine wave, things go up and down. Your success isn't necessarily linear or exponential. Sometimes there are, it is a sine wave up and down. And if it's on a trend down, it, it will come back up. What I would say is get coaching. Get, join a study club, join positive men and women in dentistry, go to CE courses where you get reinvigorated. People have said to me, for you too, Kirk, I'm sure, as, oh, you're our motivational speaker. Kirk, for you and I, I would hope we, people would call us their liberation speaker because we help beat the limiting beliefs out of them and say, you can have whatever you want. Yeah. You got to be willing to pay the price. You got to step up and pay the price, but you yeah. can have it. And if you're not crystal clear on what you want to do, I love Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, where he talks about you climbing the ladder of success and you realize the ladder's up against the wrong wall. So you got to take a step back sometimes and say, what do I really want to do? Why did I go into this profession? There's still so many opportunities. And again, at that 32-year-old, they're probably going to only practice another 30 years. Yep. If they took two or three years off to do more training, yes, it would be a hit to them and their family short term, but long term, they'll be happier. 100%. 100%. I completely agree. And you and I have been in so many of these courses together. You know, if you're a dentist listening, remember this, your brain has infinite potential. Your hands 
have limited potential, no matter how good they are. And so your ability to think well in your future is critically important. That's why you get a coach. That's why you be in a study club. That's what you might be thinking. Well, I don't need to go to Panky. Yes, you do. Because it's not about the education. It's the fact that you're going to improve your thinking. You're going to see things better. You're going to be ready for them when they come to you. It's awesome. And on top of it, you're going to keep the fire lit when you go back to your practice, which might be the most important thing on a Monday or a Tuesday when it comes to working with a dentist. How do you keep the fire lit when you created your preferred future? Kirk, I love the question and the concept. I, I was committed to constant improvement. So I was going to courses. When I signed up for Panky, I went every January through six years. It was a, at the time, it was a six-year process. And then I got to start teaching there. But I knew every beginning of every year, I was going to have a fire-up session there. And that was important to me. I was in study clubs with other successful men and women, which was a huge boost to me. Because I started speaking, I had to meet and hang out with some really incredible people. And I figured out early in my career, one thing that I loved trying to do when I went to a meeting is I'd go up to the speaker and say, do you have lunch plans? My third month in private practice, I heard Ms. Linda Miles from Virginia Beach, Virginia speak and the grand dame of practice management and leadership. And I went up to her like some pathetic character from some Oliver Twist novel. Please, sir, I have, I have some more. I said, Linda, I bought this practice. I don't know what I'm doing. She said, poor child, let's have lunch. And she listened to me whine and moan and complain and said, why don't you try this, that, this, that. Gave me five little ideas. Next month, the practice doubled and then doubled and we were off to the races. I hope you so paid I, for lunch. Uh, I was out of course. <laughs> but for me to say, well, who have I had lunch with? Well, I had lunch with yeah. Linda Miles, Dr. Kathy Jamison, Dr. Erwin Becker, Kurt Barrett, Larry Rosenthal, Dave Hornbrook, Bill Dorfman, Bill Dickerson. Doc, you go down the line. Dr. Pete Dawson, unbelievable opportunity, Dave Hornbrook. I could go just go on and on. Dr. John Perversky. There have been so many men and women that just took such good care of me. And my one of my mentors in dentistry, Kirk, said, if you go to a six-hour seminar and you only get one good idea out of it, it's worth the entire day. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that if you go with that perspective, I could hear one thing that's going to change my life. That, that's pretty amazing. I remember going to Panky the first time and them quoting uh, just uh, one of the most amazing things that I've ever heard is there was a quote, people will buy what they value. They'll buy what they want, not necessarily what they need. It's the words of Harold Worth. Yeah. People will buy what they value. They'll buy what they want, not necessarily what they need. So you got to find out what they want. I remember hearing Frank Spear say, you only treat what you see you only see what you know. Well, it's like, whoa. Mm -hmm. So I got to look at things in a different fashion. I yeah. got to slow down and ask the patients, why are you here? What do you value? What are your goals for your health, teeth, and smile? Is it important that you keep your teeth the rest of your life? I'm not a mind reader. Yeah. But here's another thought. Dr. Mark, you're, it seems like your practice career was just you know, it was ideal. Like you never had any bumps. It seems like you had a great team around you all the time. Yeah, like absolutely. things were easy. They all were the piece of cake until I got fired. Okay. Until teammates quit. Until a woman I was about to fire walked in on Christmas Eve and said, I'm pregnant. Not from me. Mm -hmm. It just, I was so blessed, Kirk, but I bought basically a bankrupt practice July 1st, 1986 and made it worse. And then the practice exploded. And then the stock market tanked and then the practice grew again and then the dot-com bubble hit and then the practice grew again and then the housing market crashed. And this is going to happen. Yeah, It's the flow of economics, but the fact is there'll be a segment of your patients that are going to want to keep their teeth. And I will tell you during turbulent times, here's a pearl for your listeners, for our listeners. I feel like I'm part of the ACT family. The times are tough right now. Now is a great time to do a lot of just because dentistry. If you have some open chair time during the toughest times of 08, 09, we reserved our least utilized hygiene time, which is like the 10 or 11 o'clock slot. Everyone yeah. wants the eight o'clock appointment and the four o'clock appointment. Yep. We reserved that for time to donate to a patient that called and said, I, I lost my job. I lost my insurance. I have no money. I'm going to have to cancel my appointment. And our answer was, you get your butt in here right now. You get these children in here right now. 
You've been loyal to me for 20 years. I'm going to take good care of you. And when you get back on your feet, you can take care of it. Or Mazel Tov, happy birthday, happy anniversary. It's a love gift from the team and I. Yeah, I, I love gave, it. I gave away a lot of little hygiene visits to win on the other end. Yeah. And you look at, you know, you bring up a great point. We're just looking for little wins. I think one of the things to understand as a dental professional is you're not looking for perfect. We're just looking for progress. I think if you yeah. can experience progress year over year in most experts agree, if you own a business in 10 years, you're going to have one or two down years. You just are maybe let's hope it's not more than that. Being married, there's seven days in a week. You know, you're not gonna you're not gonna have a seven zero. You're gonna have a six one or a, you know five two. Let's hope. If you're at a four three or three four, let's try to improve the score to a five two. Five good days, two not so good days. Everything is about making a little bit of an incremental improvement, making some progress, and with that, you can create a preferred future. You look back and go. You know, in most teams that do win, none of them, very few of them have a perfect season. I don't know of an NBA team that had a perfect season. I don't know no a baseball thing. team. No uh, there's, a, there's a there's one or two NFL, I don't know, maybe one NFL team. I one. Miami, 1972. And that was the only one. And that, I'm, that I'm aware of, two college basketball, Indiana, 1975, and the UNC Tar Heels in 1957, because my oh. uncle was the head cheerleader. That's the funny you would game know where they beat Wilt Chamberlain. Yeah, that's very, very interesting. I know that I, because our national player of the year from that team, Lenny Rosenbluth, passed away two days ago. Oh, man. So blessed I'm, memory is Lenny. But absolutely. there is no perfection. There is excellence that you can strive for. People said to me, Kirk, you mentioned I had this amazing team. Not always. Mm -hmm. Every teammate that I hired used to work in another dental office, left them, came to me, and stayed 25 years, 19 years, 15, 15, 15, 14. I got such love and loyalty from them. And I wasn't always the best boss, Kirk. I tried really hard. I tried to spoil them rotten. But doctors, you, there is no perfection. You're going to have tough days too. So you give yourself a little grace as you can ask the team to give you grace when you're a bit of a turkey. And when they stub their toe, you pick them up and give them a hug and say, let's get back in there and fight. Yeah. And you're going to be okay. We're going to get through this. We're absolutely going to get through this, Kirk. Things are tough. I just was old, had the privilege of taking family on vacation over to Europe. You think gas prices are high here? Look at a liter of petrol over in Europe. Oh my God. Is it crazy? You know, it's nuts. But so that it's, it's okay. Again, the opportunity in this country is endless. Yeah. The opportunity to be in a relationship with your patients and love on them and listen to them and listen to their goals and suggest ways for them to get healthy at their pace, at their comfort. You take a long-term view, you're going to win. 100%. And if I think, if you get anything out of what this great man has shared, like you get to make the choices. You can make the rules. You can choose what procedures to do. You can choose where to practice. You can choose how to practice. There are so many choices. Don't ever let somebody else make the rules for you. You get to make the rules. And I love it. Any last thoughts you have on creating my preferred future in dentistry, Mark? Two amazing two education venues coming up that I would love to see the audience at. Yes. September 15th to 17th in Vegas is Densefly Sierra World. The CAD CAM meeting is only be about 8,000 people there. David Spade is the initial entertainment, second funniest man next to Kurt Barrett that I've ever yeah. met. <laughs> and the entertainment the next night is Journey, Don't Stop Believing, which that's is awesome. going to be the theme song of ACT, Don't Stop Believing. So that's a great three-day meeting. Kirk, you now be at the ADA in Houston, October 13th to 15th. Can't wait to be there. Can't wait to see the new ADA as they're really trying to reinvent themselves as well. So if you're feeling in a rut, if you've got the blues going on, if you're anxious about COVID, about the economy, about the war, join us at one of these great dental meetings and just get turned on and fired up. I would love to see you there. Yeah, I will put, uh, I'll have our writers. So if you guys are listening on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, doesn't matter. Flip up to the show notes. You're going to see there are links in there to not only how to communicate with Mark, reach out to him. I'm going to encourage you to do that. And also the meetings that he had mentioned. And I am super pumped for the ADA SmileCon. That's going to be awesome. I don't even know how this is going to work, but I know it's going to be an absolute blast. So make sure you check it out. Join us there. And it is a lot of fun. So... Um, brother, I'm just always grateful for your kind words, your, you know, your friendship, 
uh, the direction and what you've done for this great profession. So thanks for being on today, buddy. It's my privilege, Kirk. I so admire you once again for what you have done, taking a bullet for dentistry and basically saving people's lives during COVID, giving them a lifeline and nobody does it better. And I just appreciate the privilege of being with you all today. Take yeah. care. Thank you, brother. We'll stick around. We'll say goodbye to everybody else. But uh, as you can see, he loves this great profession as I do love this great profession. And so if there's one thing we want to leave you with is your future is very bright. You just have to choose it. You are going to be okay. And dentistry is truly one of the greatest professions ever. And if you get stuck at any point, I can volunteer, Mark, myself, anybody. There's a great group of people out there that are willing to help you so you don't feel alone on this journey and make it a great one. So until we see you guys next time or you hear from us next time, do us a favor, enjoy your day, and keep listening, keep watching the best practices show. You guys enjoy your day. Thank you.